sunbeams and moonbeams enough to shine. Oh, listen, Lord, if you want to know. We realize, O oh God, that you know better than we how much the world needs love. It is with joy that we now read Luke's story of Pentecost when you sent us the spirit of love. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all gathered together. Suddenly from the sky there was a noise like a strong driving wind that filled the whole house where they sat. There appeared to them tongues as a fire that parted and came to rest on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues and to proclaim according to the promptings of the Spirit. Now there were living in Jerusalem devout people, Jews of every nation under heaven, who on hearing the sound gathered in a crowd. But they were confused because each one heard the speakers in his own language. This astounded them. And they asked in amazement, Aren't these men who are speaking all Galileans? How is it then that each of us hears them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, of Judea and Cappadocia, of Pontus and Asia, of Phrygia and Pamphylia, of Egypt, and the regions of Libya around Cyrene, even visitors from Rome, all Jews or Jewish converts, Cretans and Arabs too. And yet, we hear them speaking in our own tongues about the great things which God has done. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Then my Father will love him, and we shall come to him and make our dwelling place with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word that you hear is not my own, but comes from the Father who sent me. All this have I spoken to you during my stay with you. But the Paraclete, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you myself. Peace is my farewell to you. My peace is my gift to you, and I do not give it to you as the world gives it. Do not let your hearts be troubled or fearful. You have heard me say to you, I am going away, 
and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice to have me go to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. But I have told you this now, even before it happens, so that when it does happen, you may believe. I shall no longer speak at length with you, for the Prince of this world is coming. Actually, he has no hold on me. But the world must recognize that I love the Father, and I do exactly as the Father commanded me. The apostles poured out of the upper room, so intoxicated with the ecstasy of the Spirit, that they seemed to the people in Pentecost Square like men who were drunk. But Peter said this was not new wine, but the gift of prophecy. Now young men shall see visions, and old men shall dream dreams. The Spirit has even come to the maidservants. The young shall prophesy. For the church needs the wild extravagance of youth. The old shall prophesy, because the church requires the wise tempering of age. This work of prophecy is not the fine art of prediction, but the far more serious work of truly seeing the meaning of our present situation. Prophecy cools in the church from time to time, either because there is not a great need or our structures are too heavy to permit spontaneity. But Christ has sent his spirit. The spirit is stronger than the weight of human tradition and the crust of cultural overlay. A golden age of prophecy dawns on the church today. Christians will shake the foundations, not to destroy the ancient church, but to readjust her bones to fit the clothes of a new generation. You are the prophets. You are the brave new men for a brave new world, hardened by the power of the Spirit, firmed by an uncompromising conviction, and caught by a vision of Christ. You must love the world. It may stone you. It may hate you. But if you are a real prophet, this world's going to improve. Quite often, I think we identify the notions of prophecy with some sort of religion, but I think the point that Father made in his sermon is very good that uh, Prophecy is really reading the signs of the times, and, for, and if we can take serious uh, many of the comments that have been made in, uh, from people down in, in the urban areas, uh, they haven't been listened to. If we just uh, can let ourselves go enough to be open to everything, even if it's going to hurt us a little. First, we must have understanding, and then, after the understanding, we must give up ourselves. There's a difference, perhaps, that occurs to me between prophecy and false prophecy is the difference between real courage and a kind of synthetic courage that wells up out of despair. I don't know, for example, that the Holy Spirit might not move a person to choose a language which may seem repulsive or destructive at a given time in history, but still the language which may be the only language by which the message can be communicated. We will listen to good things and we will listen to bad things, but still we can ask for knowledge and God with his wisdom can give us knowledge so we can pick the bad from the good. We've been talking about listening primarily in 
personal or domestic terms, but this applies on a worldwide scale also. We hear voices from places from like Havana and Hanoi and Cairo and the Congo. We don't really listen. We stop to analyze and ask, you know, what threat is this to us or what maneuver is this? But we don't really think that they might have something authentic to say to us about the human condition. We might actually learn something from really listening to them. We can only be creative when we come together in our differences, not in our likenesses. I'm thinking particularly of the relationship between mothers and children or parents and children. Too often we make of our children extensions of ourselves. Then we don't really listen or hear what they're saying. We, we hear echoes of ourselves. When my mother and I, uh, well, we don't think on the same line sometimes. <laughs> gets into a little argument, but usually gets straightened out. When one part of the body is hurt, the whole body is hurt. And what's, you know, the disease of today is that when one part of the body is hurt, the body, the rest of the body doesn't feel it. Somehow, you know, that part that's being hurt is kind of atrophied from the body, and, and uh, you know, that shows you that there's, that somewhere there's a disease in the world. But the only way we can get together is love, that's the, that's the nerve center, is love. That's, the, that's what brings the message through, is love. I think that, that you can make this intellectual ascent about love, but uh, that still isn't going to feed hungry people and clothe them if you just say, I love you. And so I think we have to go further. We have to have action. Sit at the welcome table. We're going to sit at the welcome table one of these days. Hallelujah. We're going to sit at the welcome table. We're going to sit at the welcome table one of these days. All kinds of people. we may come to understand Pentecost as our ordination to prophecy, let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear us. That Catholics of varying opinions, theologies, and spiritualities may recognize their union in one community so that they may listen to all men. O Lord, hear us. We may hear the words of truth and the voices of those who lie. Christianity places upon us, 
To the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, proper and helpful toward salvation, that we always and everywhere give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, who ascended above the heavens to sit at your right hand. And on this day sent forth the Holy Spirit upon the children of adoption, as he had promised. Therefore the whole world is jubilant with unrestrained joy, and the virtues on high with the powers of the angelic choir continuously praise your glory in song and sing. Holy, 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 Lord God. We come to you, Father, in this spirit of thanksgiving, through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him we ask you to accept and bless these gifts we offer you in sacrifice. Bless and approve our offering. Make it truly spiritual and acceptable. Let it become for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. The day before he suffered, he took bread. And looking up to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, he gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this and eat it, all of you. This is my body. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples, and said, Take this and drink from it, all of you. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of new and everlasting covenant, the mystery of faith. This blood is to be shed for you and for all men, so that sins may be forgiven. Whenever you do this, you will do it in memory of me. Through him, in him, with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. trespasses Hallowed be thy name as we forgive those who trespass against us Hallowed be thy name 
And lead us not unto the devil to be tempted. Thou let me thy name. But deliver us from all that is evil. Thou let me thy name. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Thou let me thy name. These people remained faithful to the teaching of the apostles, to forming community, and to the celebration of the breaking of the bread.
We began with Luke's account of Pentecost. We come to a close with John's story of Jesus bringing the Spirit to the apostles. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Shalom, peace be with you. The apostles poured out of the upper room, full of an ecstasy and love that caught the imagination of the world. Now it is up to you to leave this upper room with the Spirit's love. Go out with your concern through the twelve gates of the city, in the name of the most blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Oh, what a beautiful city. Oh, oh what a beautiful city.
It's a gift to be simple. It's, it's a, a gift to be free. It's a gift to come down where we ought to be. And when we see ourselves in a way that's right, we will live in a valley of love and delight. When true simplicity is gained, to live and to love we will not be ashamed. To laugh and to sing will be our delight. Till by laughing and singing we come round right. Never resting to sleep 
why I look so sad I can almost weep The moon said Ask me not this my little child If you love me You are too bold For I must obey my father Above me And do as I am told Then I got on my own I thought I was ready for the light Cause I want to do something And ask the father for a light If he give me a light I'd let it shine on ice So this is how it began This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Yes, this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Oh yeah, this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine Yeah.